right? Okay, greetings and good afternoon to all. Thank you for accepting our invitation to this webinar in English titled My Maximizing Your College and University Experience with, with today's presenter, Deborah Menier Nunez, Communications Manager at Medical uh, Device Innovation Consortium and former student ambassador of the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico when she was uh, studying at the Arecibo campus. Thank you, Deborah, again for your valuable collaboration with this initiative that aims to provide special support to member institutions as part of the head mission to enhance Hispanic Latino student success, retention, and, and in higher education, excuse me. Today we have more than 200 participants registered. So far we have around 45 people uh, connecting and we hope that everybody, everybody can connect. Those who register for this webinar are from 12 higher institutions Edu uh, higher education institutions in Puerto Rico, including organizations as well. And we also have from 19 higher education institutions in the US. Most of them are member of heads, others are not yet. And we also have two international institu institutions uh, representative connected, including our head member institution, in Colombia. So greeting to all, we hope that this webinar will be of great benefit to everyone. Before we start the webinar, we would like to emphasize that to benefit from this, uh, from this uh, webinar, please uh, use the chat to share your questions and your comments. Also to put your name and institution so we know where you come from. Also, please keep your microphone on mute to avoid interruption since we are recording this webinar. Also, please fill out the form, access the link in the chat to request the certificate of participation on all, or also you can use your camera of your mobile and scan the QR code uh, to uh, click on the link and request your certificate. Also, please help us invite others to register and participate in our webinars and events. Our next events will be tomorrow. It's more focused to uh, 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 the, this Learning Technology Leadership Academy is, is more uh, uh, designed for faculty and administrators. So please help us spread the word among your colleagues. It's going to be an info session to learn more about this academy a capacity building program that has had designed. It's going to be tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, Puerto Rico time. And you can just need to register to connect tomorrow. It's going to be only 30 minutes presentation to learn more about how can you benefit from this uh, next edition that will be held in November next month. Next webinar, this is more for students, but we invite faculty and administrators as well. It's going to be in Spanish. It's going to be in February 28th, uh, excuse me. It's going to be in October 28th. It's, it's, it's a Friday, and it's going to be from 10 a.m. from 11 a.m., one hour through soon. And the topic is Como Desarrollar un Perfil Profesional Atractivo en LinkedIn. Also, remember the ones who are interested in applying to the Head Learning Technology Leadership Academy. You have until February, excuse me, I don't know what happened with February, but it's October 24, my apologies. And the ones interested in the Spanish edition of the Academy is going to be from November 7 to 10. And the English edition will be offered from November 15 to 18. All the details, you can find it in our website. Another webinar that we would like you to save the day and register to participate is, going, is in November 18. And the topic is Como Proteger Nuestros Recursos Finanzas with one expert resource from Banco Popular of Puerto Rico. And for uh, this webinar will be in English, more uh, focused to faculty and administrators, uh, will be in November 3rd, and the topic is regular and 
substantive interaction, desmitification, the DOE regulations, and engaging in the online classroom. And it's going to be during the afternoon. Finally, we would like to invite you to register. We are preparing the registration form in our website so you can take advantage of the Zoom. This is going to be a student, a student experience summit. It's going to be in the Convention Center of Puerto Rico, the ones who are in Puerto Rico. It's going to be November 30th and 1st of December from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And there you can will uh, you can have exhibition, experiential pavilions, plenaries about the industry and education, and concurrent workshop. It's totally free of charge, and heads will be more, uh, have an strategic alliance with this event to help spread the word. And I hope that you can benefit from this as well. Also, uh, we always remember you that we have available for all, all of you the access to the Peterson Test Prep, where you can find uh, scholarships from technical degrees to higher uh, to master's and doctor's degree. Also, practice tests and ebooks to prepare for those uh, these tests, such as PCAT, LSAT for law. GRE when you uh, want to enter a, a, a graduate studies, NCAT if you are interested a, a, on that field and also that among much others. So we invite you to go there and, and click. If you don't know a, the password of your institution, please send us an email to info at head so we can give you the a password so you can follow the steps and put the password and you a, can have total access 24-7 uh, from anywhere you are uh, to take advantage of these uh, very comprehensive resources. Also, besides the uh, test prep, we also have the Peterson Career Prep, and this database is more into when you, uh, uh, there you can search for jobs, also internships, uh, have very neat templates to create your resume, cover letters, and also have a very nice uh, virtual library with a very neat tutorials, uh, um, um, career advice, among other services. The same, if you don't have the uh, password, please send us an email and we will definitely send it to you right away so you can benefit from this. Uh, remember to follow us in our social media so you know when it's gonna be the next events and you can be there. And also, a. a Please help us invite others to take advantage of these events as well. Now we are ready to start our webinar and I am pleased to present our guest speaker today. Deborah Menir Nunez serves as, com serves as communications manager for the Medical Device Innovation Consortium. She has over seven years of social media strategy management and digital marketing consulting experience for national and Latin American markets. Before join, uh, joining his actual or current job, she was the marketing and communications account manager at Health2 Resources, an award-winning healthcare communications and public relations consulting firm, and also worked as communications specialist at Excelencia in Education, where she supports the organization's efforts advancing evidence-based practices for Latinos in higher education. Débora also serves as volunteer executive director of the Hope of U.S. Charity Puerto Rico, where she leads the effort to advance equity, access to edu equitable, excuse me, access to education and resources to K-12 students of the public school system in Puerto Rico. Débora graduates summa cum laude, double majoring in entrepreneurial and manager, ma, managerial development, excuse me, English is not my first language, of course, and human resources with a minor in psychology from the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, Arecibo, where she became the first Truman Scholar. Uh, during her bachelor studies, she was a head student ambassador, and we have a very nice memories of that. And she was the president of the study body council, the also the president of the comedy club, 
and the student and president of the Student Association for Internationalization and the founding president of the uh, NSLS Inter American. She has recently published Art of Procrastination, Coloring and Activity book celebrating the importance of taking a break for mental health. Deborah is currently based in Washington, D.C. on her third year of the Truman Albright Fellowship. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for accepting our invitation to be the speaker today. I'm stopping my presentation so you can uh, share yours and start this webinar. So welcome, everyone. And please keep mute your microphone so we uh, don't uh, avoid any interruptions to Deborah's presentation. Go ahead. And thank, thank you, you so again much. to all. Thank you so much to Belkis for that uh, introduction. I am very happy to be here today and speak with you uh, on this topic because as you heard, I kind of maximize my college and university experience. And uh, one of the things that uh, I always aspire to do is to help others reach the same places that I have or find, find and chart their own paths. Because the most important part of all of this is that I always say that the most extraordinary part of me is that I am completely ordinary. So everybody can maximize their college and university experience. Everyone can have uh, similar opportunities available for them. And what I want you to take with you today is that no matter where you are, you too can build the university experience that you want and chart your own path. So let's get into it. Right. Uh, so today's plan, we're going to start with level setting. We're going to see where we are, where we want to go. Let's define some of, of the ideas, some of the items so we can like do a little bit of, of houseworking and understanding or why and how it guides the path that we chart for ourselves, as well as a framework so you can uh, organize your steps and, and get it done. And I'm going to talk a little bit about networking 101. So those are like the high points of what we're going to be touching today. So a little bit about me in a shorter version is that I'm an author, I'm a business owner and a public servant and pretty much an overachiever by grace. So all of the things that you will see today are under that framing that this is my self perception. Uh, we are here to serve, and I am here to put all of my my knowledge and experience to the service of others. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them in, in the comments so I can best serve you that way. So let's talk a little bit about my experience in the framing of the good part and then the not so good part. So the good part of my journey in college and university was that by the time I graduated, I had two leadership certifications, one small business certification. I had been part of seven student organizations, had been elected president of the student body council, had been a head student ambassador, had studied in the Dominican Republic, Canada, Puerto Rico, had visited Trinidad, Malaysia, South Korea, Japan, had published a book, had two majors, one minor, graduated summa cum laude, and with uh, also graduated with a scholarship uh, and a new network of public servants. Um, so the scholarship was for uh, my graduate studies. I became a Truman Scholar. So that's what that's about. So there were many, many, many instances throughout my journey in higher education that allowed me to graduate with a very thick portfolio of things that I was able to do. Now, what the less good of the entire experience is that I am what's considered a non-traditional transfer student. And ever since I've been living in DC, I've, I've learned all of this new terminology of how we talk about higher education, how we talk about students. And it turned out that my path to higher education had been non-traditional. Um, I had started studying in the Dominican Republic in a major to become a doctor. And obviously that did not work out and it didn't have to work out. So um, I went back to Puerto Rico after completing study abroad and I spent a year and a half fighting for my transfer credits. So 
if you're a transfer student, you know that it is a hassle to kind of deal with uh, the convalidation systems, the evaluations, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a heavy lift for a year and a half of me visiting the office every single day and reminding the, the administrator that I needed these credits to be transferred. Um, at the same time, I had to juggle between being a full-time student, having uh, like at one point it was six part-time jobs and all of the other things that you saw that were happening in my schedule. And this led for me to take eight years and three majors to actually be able to graduate. So whenever I, uh, I talk about like all of my experience, I may be a multi-hyphenated person now, but it took a long journey to get there. So if you feel like you're not at the place that you would have wanted to be when you first envisioned higher education, that's okay. Like you're you're gonna have the chance to build up uh, your experience and your path as you go. There is not an expectation of you to do it in four years or do it like immediately, but charting a path that works for you and what your goals are. So that's my encouragement for all of you non-traditional <laughs> transfer students as me. Uh, we can all chart our own, our own part, path, sorry about that, our own path in higher education because we all know that um, we come to higher education with very specific things. So where are we and where do we go from here? I have uh, crafted a little bit of activity so we can, uh, if you can, please join me on Slido. So we get a little bit of uh, uh, activity going on. I want to make this as interactive as possible. I just put the, the website in the chat as well. So whenever you are able please join me at Slido so we can do a real-time polling. So right now, the first question that uh, we would like to discuss so you can interact with me and what we are presenting today is what year of your degree you are currently on. This is important because depending on the year that you currently are, uh, I can best support and guide the way that I talk about which doors to knock and what opportunities to search for. So I'm gonna give uh, one more minute for everybody to answer the poll. Um, and if you have any like additional questions or any issues accessing it, just like put it in the chat so I can give you one or two more minutes. Yeah, and you can see on the side of the slide, the code and the also and the, on the screen the and, and, the, and the code. And also Maribel, uh, our executive assistant, put it on the chat as well, if you don't, if you don't find it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. So, so far we have received 18 responses. So here we are. So we've got, we've got good, good. We've got a good crowd today. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Okay, so the minute is up. So, so far, uh, our audience right now, we have mostly first year students. That's, I'm I'm very happy that you are first year students and hearing this. Uh, we also have uh, some third years, uh, over five years. So hi, hello to my crowd. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we've got some four years and uh, second years, awesome. So I'm gonna go to the next question. What word or phrase comes to mind when we say maximizing. If you hear that, um, what word comes? How do you how do you like envision that um, happening? I see seven of you already typing. Eight. I'm excited. So um, some of the phrases and the words that you come up are going to appear on the slide. Time management. Great making the most of it, take advantage of. Yes, awesome. I'm gonna give one more minute. So at 2.24, I'm gonna move the slide. Full potential, open opportunities for all, great. Love these answers. Maximum, full potential, great. Organized stuff, yes. Developing your potential social skills, yes. Being productive, important, very important. Uh, the most of it, organizing stuff, prioritizing time, opportunities, 
the most of something or a situation? Yes. Developing to the maximum. Yep. You're right on the money with that. Let's see. So we've got less than 30 seconds left. Uh, do everything possible. Yes. Full advantage of opportunities. Yes. Learn more subjects, doing it all. <laughs> yes, uh, we try. We try to do it all. Okay, so I'm gonna move uh I'm gonna move forward. So so far we see some common themes on when we say maximizing what we think of, we think about making the most of it. We some said participating in social events of leadership and communication, let's say, uh, the most out of something or a situation, developing potentials and social skills, full potential, maximum, taking advantage of. So we're all thinking about maximizing connected to opportunities. So that is great. Okay, so the last question before we continue is what do you think would make you competitive in the workplace? So please join me in answering the last question of today's Slido. Okay, I see three of you typing skills. Yes, yes, that's great. Smart worker, great. Leadership and interpersonal skills. Yes, awesome. Okay, I'm going to give until 226 and then we're going to move. Uh, good relationships with co workers. Yes. Being unique and trying to be the best. Skill set, organized, maximizing time. All of these are great skills to have. Volunteering, shadowing work. Yes. All of these are right in the right path. Being unique, trying to be the best. Skill set and leadership. Most experience in education. Great experience, internships, good skills, good resume. Yes, yes, yes to all of those. Thinking outside the box, very, very important. Very, very important. Okay, so it's 226. Okay, so some of your answers are connected to thinking outside the, outside the box, uh, volunteering, skills, being organized, maximizing time, uh, shadowing, skill sets, leadership. So it's mostly connected to the way that you build up your portfolio and you work with people. You touched on three very important parts of this, and it's the way that you can connect with others, like developing leadership skills that are very, very important, and having good relationships with your coworkers. Educating yourselves, getting connected with others really will help you build up um, that experience, many topics, multiple skills. Yes, that helps also becoming uh, adaptable. So you can uh, connect with others in your field and you're able to like make multiple connections, but not only connections, but critical thinking. Love that. Uh, it is very important that you're able to process a lot of information and uh, to support your coworkers because at the end of the day, um, you are a team. So teamwork, skills on that, Great. So let's define maximize. Like as you see, a lot of a lot of you um, kind of commented on this. So what we're trying to do is to increase to a maximum per the Merriam-Webster's dictionary to make the most of or to find a maximum value of. So that's what we are trying to accomplish today. Of what are some of the opportunities available for us to do just that in our college and university experience? So some of the common reasons why people seek a degree are searching for career opportunities, gaining skills, and being able to like set themselves apart in their fields. That's one of the reasons why people seek a degree. They're also search for it for income growth and social mobility, that it's like if you're in a economic tier, moving to the next, and having career satisfaction. So these are um, one of... These are three of the most common reasons why people seek a degree so they get, are able to advance their careers and build a life that they are proud of, right? So what types of opportunities are available for students in the first year, second year, fifth year, and all of that? So I am obsessive with studying abroad and going abroad. Uh, before I graduated, I 
wrote about that because it is a very transformative experience. And usually one of the reasons why people do not engage in study abroad opportunities is because they think there is not enough funding. That's not the case. Because we are part of the organizations that we are, we have access to a lot of resources to study abroad. There are pages that are dedicated to provide information about that, like studyabroad.gov. And uh, it can help you find study about programs, research uh, programs per se, internships, conferences, MUN models, like you name it, there is probably something for it. So when I'm talking about going abroad, there are two main ways that you can engage in study abroad programs. You have the study abroad or international experiences that are through the departments in your institutions that they have partnerships with educate with uh, institutions abroad. You can do that um, by searching an office of internationalization. That's a big word, but <laughs> it's worth it. You can search for the word of international study studies if there is one in your your department. Um, and I'm not going into the very specifics about the type of offices or the type of opportunities that you can search for because it varies from institution to institution, and there are also uh, programs of study abroad that are independent. So you can search for independent study abroad programs uh, in councils like CIE. E, e. So they have CIEE.org. They have opportunities available for you to travel across the globe uh, and gain credits for your studies. So before I move forward, I'm going to break this down <laughs> through the different ways that you can engage in, in going abroad opportunities. That's how I'm going to call them. So the first bucket of it is study abroad. It has to do with academic experiences abroad. Those are the ones that you will probably need to connect with your institution to see how, if they have any partnerships with organizations, if they have any agreements that allow students to do exchanges. So for example, there are some structures of study abroad programs that allow students to go to an international institution and pay uh, as if they were in their campus. So it is very important that you check with your departments uh, in your institutions, what type of partnerships are there available, or if you would need to explore your own, like build your own adventure type of study abroad program with an independent institution. When you're doing academic study abroad programs, they are dependent of receiving credits for the classes that you take in another country. So it's very important that if you're if you're searching or researching information to do an independent study abroad program, you get in touch with your uh, admissions and um, admissions department in, in your institution so they can tell you what are the, the timelines and the needs for transferring credits because even though you're going to be an active student of your institution, they would probably need to evaluate the class to, to make sure that it meets the standards or the requirements. Now, all of that hassle gets covered if you are uh, participating in a study abroad opportunity that is through a partnership with your institution, because in that case, they have already pre-vetted some of the classes, they have specific agreements and uh, equivalencies or convalidation between the classes and the requirements, so it is easier for you to participate through a uh, programs that are like vetted by your institution, but if there are none, because uh, this is a growing field in Puerto Rico specifically, then there are many opportunities that would still allow you to do that as an independent uh, student, student. And there are some schools abroad in like internationally and also abroad in the US uh, because there is a program that is called uh, the National Study, Ab Study Abroad Program pretty much. And what, you, what that does it, is that allows students from uh, Puerto Rico or any other states across the US to go to institutions that they have partnerships with across the US. So for example, if you are a student in Puerto Rico, I'm gonna take Puerto Rico as an example, you can search uh, if your institution has a partnership and you're allowed to, for example, travel to California and do a term in that institution paying for the credits uh, as if you were 
in Puerto Rico. So that's an option. And it that one specifically requires a partnership or a membership in, in one of the national student exchange organizations. So that's the academic part. Then there's also research programs. The good part about research programs is that you don't necessarily need to have an agreement with other institutions to participate because there are a lot of institutions that do summer research programs. There are a lot of institutions like NASA and NSF that have internship programs and research programs that are specific to the field that you're trying to get into. And you can get that experience without having to go through your university. So there are a lot of research programs by uh, businesses, companies, organizations that you're able to access by Googling or like searching online for research programs or research summer programs or something of the like. So research programs are not dependent on receiving credit for your participation in the program. There are some institutions that would uh, take that experience and give you credit for it in classes, but if not, it's still a good experience for you to be able to be part of a publication or a scientific paper. So you have the opportunity there to like get yourself in the field and also explore if that's the field that it's right for you. I am not gonna be the advocate of like changing your major, but at the same time, it is really important that uh, you can get as much information about the opportunities available and what it really means to work in the field that you're studying as fast and soon as you can. Um, internship programs. So most of the study abroad programs and internship programs have the requirement that you have completed at least one year of your higher education. So that's why I wanted to see where were you. So as a first year student, you have the opportunity of like starting to apply to summer programs because you have already, you're in the middle of your first term, for example, or your second term, depending on, on the way your, your higher institution does its terms. And you can uh, start searching for summer programs um, a lot of these summer research programs specifically have uh, stipends. So there are funds that are available for people to participate in them. Uh, some of the institutions have scholarships, like special specific universities may receive students during the summer for them to participate of the research programs and they would fund your housing, they would fund your food, they would fund, uh, give you a stipend for costs of living. And um, there's also one with NASA. So there are different ways that you can participate in research programs per se. So as first years, my recommendation is for you to start researching now. <laughs> Uh, about information of how to apply to these programs to go into the summer. The second years, I tell you, uh, now you have a little bit more of like background in your field. Because of that, you may be el eligible to do a summer internship at the US or abroad where you can uh, gain experience in your field and start building that portfolio of like getting uh, as a sub author in a publication, uh, maybe connecting with people who are already in your field. Maybe they give you uh, opportunities to shadow them during the summer. So if you're a second year student, that's an opportunity for you as well. Those who are four or fifth year students, you have even more opportunities to do your internships because you have the opportunity of either doing it for credit if your uh, career uh, requires for you to do like a practice. There are some institutions that allow their students to do those internships abroad. There are some institutions that don't. Uh, but if you can also go for programs like HAKU, HAKU has a national internship program. And what they do is that they receive in Washington DC students to do a term or a full year internship with businesses and organizations. And they pay you a stipend weekly. So you're able to live in Washington DC during the period you're doing your internship. So as a student, like even if you're in your first, second, fourth, fifth, seventh, or eighth, like I was, there are opportunities for you to maximize going abroad or going nationally abroad uh, to the US. So that's that. Then there's also conferences. Uh, there are, in the, in the higher education institutions, in the 
the department that deals with study of student affairs, there is almost all the time, not all the cases, they have funds available for students to participate on conferences or participate in international uh, international conferences as well. So what this means is that there is an extracurricular component of the funds that are available in institutions and universities that you can tap into if, for example, you would like to go, let's let's talk about a, a tech conference that it's very important if you're a computer science major and you really wanted to go to that conference, but you don't have the funds to actually attend that fund from your institution could help you get there. So that's the funding for the conferences. So there's also MUN models. So for those of you who are more interested in international relations or international affairs or public service, MUN models like help people kind of uh, do mock trials, but they're not mock trials, but they're kind of similar as if they were ambassadors to the UN. So they're able to discuss um, issues that are part of the 17 goals of the 2020, 2030 agenda of how to uh, advance or reduce um, poverty, reduce hunger and uh, of the sort. So um, these models allow people to like have that experience. They have them nationally and they have them internationally. I had the opportunity of participating in one in Malaysia. And I got I received funds from my institution to be able to attend to there. So uh, that's why I went to Malaysia. <laughs> so there are many ways that you can engage and in going abroad. So that's the overview of like the opportunities that are available per se. Now, other sort of opportunities that are available are portfolio building. I put a big and in bold because this is very important. Search for scholarships, things that you can put on your resume that you can list up for your undergrad, for your graduate studies, to go for going abroad. Like I mentioned, there are funds available for this. Seek to have several certifications. Many, many universities offer some certifications on campus, and now we have the opportunity of participating and getting certifications online. We have services like HETS that allow us to find and, and get into leadership academies. So we have the different, we have different resources available at the distance of a click so we can participate on them. Join student organizations. You do not have to be the president of the organizations. You can just be a member and engage in them. You don't have to like get your schedule super busy. You can engage in a capacity that will not tamper with, with your academics because that's still your main goal. You can become part of the student body council or student government in, in your institution. You can seek for extracurricular activities like volunteering in your communities or maybe volunteering at church or at your place of worship. And I always recommend that you connect with your head student ambassador so you get uh, access to maximizing all of the resources that HEADS has available. The fact that you're here today, today means that you, you potentially belong to the HEADS consortium per se. So tap into the, the experiences and the opportunities that are available there. Use the tools to search for scholarship, scholarships, get ready for your grad school. So there are different ways um, that you're able to engage. So please search and connect so you can maximize those. So what other opportunities are available? The ones that you build for yourself. Maybe when you, when you start doing your research project, um, you find out that your university does not have a lot of things available, uh, but you see and you're is interested in like maybe becoming a researcher and coming to the mainland. And that's one of your goals. And so search for opportunities that are available. And if none are available, do them for yourself, like chart your own path. Now, what is the framework that I uh, use to and have used throughout my studies to maximize my college and university experience and the one that you can use yourself? I call it Ideas Pin. And Ideas Pin breaks down 
pretty simple. It's number one, you identify available opportunities around you. You search for information on, on your campus, you search for information on the internet, you search for information, <laughs> search for information. That's how you identify available opportunities. The second part of it is decide on your why. You will find a lot of opportunities that are going to be available for you. And you have to decide why the specific program that you're going into would be important for you, would be important for your goals, and really like connects with what you're trying to accomplish. After you decide on your why, engage on key supporters, the people that are going to be your mentors, maybe. Maybe some professors have made themselves available to help like uh, proof proofread your, your documents or they are able to give you a letter of recommendation. Like engage the people that are going to become your network whenever you're applying for a program, whenever you are trying to explore if that's the best fit for you. So engage them approach with a plan. Whenever you are getting ready to apply for something, you need to plan it out. Um, I always recommend starting with the deadline and working yourself back way from there. By when do you need to submit your letters of recommendations? By when do you need to submit your application per se? Who are going to be the people that are going to be helping you? Why are you going there? And all of those questions, so you have a plan before you do that. Now, when you have a plan, you will see what areas you need to board on. So you can search for resources that are available. If you need somebody to be your mentor, or if you need somebody to review the, the document that you need, you need to see what are the resources that are available that are gonna help you uh, be able to submit in time and do everything that you we need to fulfill the application process if it's a scholarship or if it's an abroad program and you're able to have all the resources you need at the palm of your hand. So when you are preparing, reviewing, submitting and following up, you have all of that information in a centralized place. Um, one of the things that people uh, usually uh, do, like after you submit an application, uh, they probably will let you know at a certain period of time, but if you don't hear back from the institution, from the platform, from the person who is dealing with your with your application per se, follow up with them, like talk, call them, check with them. What is the status? What is going on? Now, the next two parts, the I and the N, do not depend of you at first. If you get into the program, they become like, <laughs> their green line go. If they, if you are not accepted up for the program or the scholarship or the opportunity that you're seeking, it's very important that you write back and ask for feedback on your application. Even if they said that they were, they're not going to be able to tell everybody that why they weren't selected, there is a high chance that that institution program or opportunity is going to give you very real and constructive feedback on what it was from your application that didn't work out. Maybe not on the day of receiving the rejection would be the best time to do it, but maybe a week or two weeks after the results came in, you can reach out to them and, and, and ask for questions like, why wasn't I selected? How can I improve my, my, applica my application next time? Am I allowed to apply uh, the following year? And you can do like all of those like questions and receive guidance on how to do better next time. Now, if you are accepted to the study, oh, another thing is that not every time that you get rejected from a program has to do with you. Many times uh, you may get rejected from a program because they were searching for a different type of candidate because they think it's not a good fit for you. They didn't have enough funds that year. So not every time that you get rejected from a, pro from a program talks of a problem that has something to do with you or something that you can improve. That's also a good reason why it's good to search for feedback because um, they can give you guidance as if it was a funding problem and your application was like a perfect and they they just weren't able to accept as many applicants. So like it's always very important to ask for feedback because of that. So now intentionally participate. When you are in a program, Go there and maximize the time that you are there. 
attend if, if if it's a conference attend as many sessions as you can connect with as many people as you can hear take notes and be like move around in a way that you are able to to gain everything that they were ex like expecting to provide for you if you're in a conference they're always trying to create opportunities for you to network with people they're trying to connect you to so you become a lead for example for a university that is trying to recruit students for them to, to go to grad school or law school or school of the school so if you have the opportunity of attending a conference, go to every booth, participate in all the activities, knock every door, um, and just, just do that for yourself, right? So intentionally participate, be present. If you need to put your, your phone on, do not disturb where you're there, do it, but be present in the moment and be like take in everything that they wanted for you. And then the end of the idea spin is to network, network, network. You never, ever know who you are talking with, what they're going to become at one point in their lives. And like, you never know how an opportunity that may not seem as big then grows into something very big. So talk with everybody, be friendly with everybody. Do not burn any bridges. I am not giving you like super wisdom, but like, please take this into account. And remember that networking, it's all about people, not for the benefits of engaging. Um, I don't know about you, but I do not like when people just like are around just to use my knowledge or like just to do things. It feels, it feels wrong, right? It feels bad that somebody is only just there to see what they can get out of you. But at the same time, do not be afraid of asking for help. People like helping others. I have not had a single person told me that they didn't want to help me or like that I was nagging or anything. So do not be afraid of asking for help. Usually whenever we think we are being annoying or by asking somebody, we're actually tapping into their expertise and people really like when they get tapped into like answering a question. So be present, build real relationships with, with the people that you connect. Do not base the entire thing on the goal that you have or the millionaire idea or like whatever benefit you think you may get from that connection. Just be present and be real and be with an open mind to, to learn from the people that, that are around you. Now, where we can network? We can network in events like this one, events that are online. We can join studying student associations or like professional associations that can help us with that. And last but not least, LinkedIn. LinkedIn in this day and age that is like virtual and online, you can make really great connections through LinkedIn. Um, it is very important that if you're gonna reach out to somebody that you do not know or haven't talked with before, you like introduce yourself, tell them why you are connecting with them. Um, sometimes you will have the opportunity of getting connections on your LinkedIn because of who is already your friend. So that LinkedIn is one of the most powerful tours, tools for networking while abroad. So that's pretty much it. Uh, now, before I close, I want you to remember this thing, and it's that nobody will be as invested in your goals, your dreams, your success as you. So regardless of like well-intentioned people in your life and people who like may be there in your path to guide you, always be present and do things that feel right for you and that you consider that really connect with your goals, your visions, and do not get yourself get, you know, distracted by the shiny, pretty things that may come in the way. And sometimes we lose, sometimes we don't, but we always need to keep moving forward. So now go and make things happen. Any questions? <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you, Deborah. And this is the time for questions. I have uh seeing on the chat that everybody's saying excellent information Stanford advice and suggestions uh the presentation was wonderful I totally agree with that and but this is the time you can either 
Bella, in order, uh, open your mic, uh, your audio to share your questions or use the chat so we can have more, Bella, uh, more organized the information. Let me see if I have uh, any questions that I may. Do you have a question for Deborah? No, that's Maribel telling us. Link, uh, Jaime said, is agree with you that LinkedIn is very important. It helped me in my two internships to network easier. Uh, excellent information. Also remember to click on the link for the survey and also on the link to request your certificate, very important. Uh, but this is the time for questions. I think your presentation have been really, Bella, a lot of information, very clear. So I guess that that's, that's why we don't have any questions, but mira, Deborah, do you have time to continue writing books? Norma asks you. <laughs> Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, I have, I, I call it my personal system. I trick myself into being productive 15 minutes at a time. Uh, I do not like, like one out of 10 do not recommend if, if you get too distracted, but I usually have a lot of, I usually have a lot of projects at the same time open. So what I do is that I, if I get bored with one, because literally I just get bored, mm -hmm. I just move to the next. So exactly. I, I do my task 15 minutes at a time and my coloring book. Um, so the first book that I published, I did it after Hurricane Maria. So it's not like there were much to do. So I thought that after like I went back to to normal or like regular life, I wasn't going to be able to like do another book again. And then the coloring book, actually, uh, I published it last November and I it I like from the signing it to making it public, it only took me a month because I tricked myself into making one design per day. And it ended up that whenever I designed one thing, I got excited, so I did five. So <laughs> it went from okay. no designs to being published in a month. So uh, it's Excellent. all about tricking myself into being productive. <laughs> Excellent. We have another question from Joani, Joania. She said, do you recommend for us to apply and participate in programs that are different from what we are studying? For example, I'm studying aviation and I want to participate in a program about law and meteorology. Nice. I 100% recommend that you like get out of your field. Like you never ever know like when you're going to use that information for. After I left med school, I thought I would never have to use that information ever again. And here I am at a medical device company and I'm using that knowledge of like I don't know, seven years ago. So mm -hmm. like, it is very important um, for you to like go out of your way and out of your field. It also like, if you're building a resume, I'm a, one of my degrees is in human resources. So I, you know, uh, uh, you want to like beef up your resume and showing that you're adaptable, that you're able to like change course, that you're a quick thinker because you have some information of different fields. So uh, aviation law is a thing. So if you are able mm -hmm. to get that uh, experience in law and at some point if you in your career, you feel like going into aviation law, you have the background and you have some internship yeah. that can pack it up if you ever want to get into law school. And meteorology, like you're in aviation, mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, like keep us connected about what's going on in hurricanes are airplanes so there is mm -hmm. like there's always a connection between two fields that may look uh completely unrelated you just have to find a story it's all about how you communicate that skill or that internship or, or that experience that you had because it may look disconnected and then it finds a way to like connect itself to what you want in your field. So you don't have to just do aviation mm -hmm. stuff. You can go whatever you want. Exactly. We have another question. And this is from Frances Rosa. She said, hi, I'm from first year and I am very interested in research programs or in internship in summer. Can I still apply? Yes. Usually the summer, summer programs uh, have their their application process starting in August until the end of the mm -hmm. year. And some of them go until like February or March. 
So there are always like different ways that you can search for programs and internships. Like I always recommend going first to your campus and your university and see what they have available because there, there's a little bit more of like support that you can get if it's like a program that comes from your institution. But if not, um, all like you can search for the university that you would like to go to do the research program or the, or the organization and see what are their specific deadlines. Excellent. Also, I want to highlight that Jaime Vasquez said, said to jo uh, Joania that this is great thing to do. Um, in mechanic engine engineer, I'm reading Jaime's uh, uh, comment. He is a mechanic engineer, but apply and participate of areas regarding data science and coding. So he is definitely mixing. And I would like to share my experience that my bachelor degree in communications, my master's degree was in public relations. And since I have been leading, I mean, working with heads for 23 years, I decided to do my doctorate degree in education, since this is the most experience that I have on my on my career. So my doctorate degree is in leadership in education. So I have a, a combination of different fields. So this is great. Any other comments, questions to take advantage of all the experience and expertise that Deborah have, although she's very young. Uh, she has been full maximizing her experience and now she continues to do that in in her not only in, in in higher ed, but also when you graduate, you you do definitely the same in your uh, uh, with work because right now you have been working with different organizations, totally different. One with health, another with education. So definitely that that definitely have been a uh, like your standard for your whole whole uh, studies and, and also right now in your professional uh, field and, and, and career. So congratulations again, Deborah. Any other questions? Maribel is pointing out that remember to request your certificate in the chat, the link there, and also to the link to the evaluation. The evaluation, we also send it after the message uh, through uh, an email in case you didn't have enough time to complete it, but if, if you want to take advantage right now, we always want to Bella, uh, continue enhancing the topics uh, that we offer in the webinars and also enhancing with your feedback our uh, how to uh, promote the services, how to any other services that you may need that we can collaborate and, 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 and develop. Um, the evaluation for us is really, really valuable. So please take a few, uh, five minutes of your time to complete it. Uh, Deborah, any other conclusions since it's three o'clock already uh, okay. to conclude this wonderful webinar that we have uh, have with you? Go ahead. Of course, of course. Thank you. First of all, thank you all for, for staying connected and, and joining this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can contact me through my website. It's www.deoraonline. Um, and I'm also in social media by uh, Demir Nunes. Um, it, that's in all social media platforms. So you can you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. <laughs> so um, in the, whichever platform you're most available, I am there. I'm also on TikTok, but that's another story. Anyway, so thank you for being yeah. here and, and joining today. Likewise, and remember that these have been recorded. Uh, this webinar so uh, and follow us in our social media we're going to post when the recording is ready and also a uh, any uh, the the promos and, and news of other the next webinars and also new opportunities to continue uh, uh developing your leadership and also a uh, networking and and do everything that we have been talked today in this uh, awesome webinar so thank you again. Have a great, it's Thursday today, but tomorrow is Friday, so have a nice weekend. Please uh, let us know if you need anything. You can send an email to info at head.org go, or go to our website and click in contact us and you will have all our information. We will be uh, happy to assist you. And as Maribel is saying in the chat, the certificates of participation will be sent in the next 
two weeks because we have been very busy and next week I'm, I will be traveling uh, to attend a conference. So please allow us two weeks to receive your certificates. If you don't I receive it uh, between two weeks, please uh, feel free to follow us after these two weeks. Have a great uh, afternoon to everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Devora, again. It was a pleasure to see you again. Um, and we will continue to connect, uh, uh, follow up on the other topics that we mentioned. So things happen. Uh, so, uh, uh, it was amazing that we are doing some outreach of uh, the main speaker. Um, uh, surprisingly, Devora have the key person to help us in, on that. So, Devora, I will follow up with you on this for the best practices showcase. And thank you so much to everyone. Take care and have a wonderful day. Let me stop the recording.